Shoggity Using all my inner strength, suppressing the anxiety I'm about to have a panic attack It's a rhyme and a mechanic of rap You slave-minded, his manacles back I'm lean muscle, you just animal fat My team hustle, this is actual fat No hypothesis, try stopping this Try to figure that hypothesis What's really hood, ladies and gentlemen? The purge season has came back in full effect. Last time this year, it's like Batman out here. Same purge season, same purge TV, same purge network. WWE got a bunch of releases, but I'm here with none other than the two homies, Mr. Macho and Mr. Pop Culture, Mike Larkin. Gentlemen, how are you once again? Doing it, man. Fucking, we're out here with some shovels, dude. It's, it's uh, funeral time. I will say, <laughs> as, as I am Mr. Pop Culture, I am sitting in my bed, but I am not messing with my head Drew Hill style, and I'm ready to talk some pro wrestling. Woo! Let's get it popping. First off, I think the biggest name I want to start with was going to be Samoa Joe, but I'm not even going to do that because our podcast partner, Evil Onse, feels a certain <laughs> way about the GOAT the greatest of all time, Laurel Van Ness, a.k.a. Chelsea Green, a.k.a. Sh a.k.a. whatever else you want to call the baddest bitch in the game. Uh -huh, I yes. got nothing but love for LVN. Seen her live, big fan. What I will say is I think she goes with her fiancé to Impact Wrestling. I won't even go into full details about how she's going to dethrone Gil Kim as the greatest Impact knockout of all time. TNA knockout, whatever you want to call her. Eva Lone said, you got us fucking started. So I'm going to let Mike Larkin talk first because I want the, the, the sauce to lay heavy on this one at the end. Mm. Mike Larkin, what do you got, baby? Okay, so when it, when it comes to that, <laughs> this introduction for Chelsea Green. Man, I've been a Chelsea Green fan. I remember her being on Tough Enough, and then we saw her go through the ranks. I mean, she's trained by Lance Storm, for God's sake. Then we saw her go into NXT. We saw her do a lot of great things. With her impact run as LVN man, former knockouts champion, the whole nine, the, one of the best, Chelsea Green. When it comes to Chelsea Green and where she was, now NXT, I mean, she was with the Robert Stone brand doing her thing with Robbie E. Really didn't see a lot of her at, towards the end there, but I also look at it from a stance too, like if I remember correctly, before Deanna Perrazzo got released, they were going to make them a team. I mean, she did do some um, main roster bouts against Charlotte, that being Chelsea Green. Man, for this one, she had just signed like a contract like just a few months back, and now here we are. And now here we are. But I look at it from a stance, too, like there's options for her. Like you said, her fiancé, always ready, Matt Cardona, is an impact. You could put her in the tag team division. You could have her go for the knockouts title. But then on the other hand, you have AEW, where her also her former tag team partner is there, that being Dr. Britt Baker, as they were a tag team called Fire and Ice. So either way you slice it, you put her in AEW, put her in impact. For me, I think because she is with Matt Cardona and the fact that she's also very good friends with the current knockouts champion, the virtuosa herself, Miss Diana Peraza. I got to go impact on this one. But either way, we're going to get a lot of Chelsea Green, baby. Make that dollar. Do re me, Chelsea Green. Woo woo. Macho, before you go in, now her guy, is he the woo woo guy? He's the Long yeah, Island IT right. guy, right? Yeah, Zack Ryder. Yep. Woo woo woo, woo woo woo. You know it. I like that guy. Let's get it popping. It's close enough to my city. You know how it is all day, every day, Queens, baby. Macho, LVN. Tell me, legit. <clears throat> what you said, uh, the king of pay-per-view, uh, sorry, king of uh, internet himself, uh, is holding it down in impact. I, I have no doubts whatsoever that Laurel Van Ness, the Laurel Van Ness, is going to impact. Gail Kim herself, the goat of impact, on Twitter was like, hey, we got a women's tag division over here. Come on down. Dude, she is much loved, and everybody loves her as, as the hot mess, Laura Van Ness. Dude, she's amazing. She's got go in the ring. She's got legs for days. She heals up. She bangs it out. She gets it done. She is absolutely an infusion that Impact needs, especially after Taya Valkyrie has exited and made her way to uh, w, the, w, uh, NXT WWE brand as Frankie Monet. Uh, so it's only fair. It makes sense. Now, uh, Mr. Uh, Onse uh, may uh, have some ideas about what other folks said about that incident regarding her leaving Impact, and that's fine. Everybody's entitled to their, their opinion. They're also entitled to be wrong. Um, elbows and a-holes, right? That said, she, I believe, once she gets healthy, is going to have 
banger matches. She's going to fit right in. Hell, if they throw Shaza, Peyton Royce, Billy Kay, they can really build whoa, up whoa, that, that women's division. Gun. I'm saying, no, 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 I'm not jumping the gun. I'm just saying there's a lot of ladies who got were part of that cut who would love to wrestle her. All right. Laurel Van Ness can put on fire matches. All right. Uh, Flavor and fire holding those tag belts. You better believe she's more than happy to come back and win those tag belts off of them. All right. As we stated, Matt Cordona, legit. If I can be serious for a moment. Her mentor is the one and only Lance Storm. All mm-hmm. right, he does not train scrubs. She is gold on the mic. She is entertaining as hell, and she can go in that ring. It is a matter of time before she's got a belt. I've said my piece. Evil on Saint Evil Orbit can go take a walk around the short pier and jump <laughs> right in. All right, I, I gotta add on to what he said really quickly. Hold on, I, I don't mean to cut you off. But when it comes to Laurel Van Ness, Chelsea Green as well, I mean, let's not forget that she had that banger at All In. And let's not forget that she wrestled Pentagon Jr. on Lucha Underground in stellar fashion. Like, come on. Come on. There is no stopping her. I wish her nothing but the best, a speedy recovery, and to help uh, Evil Onse eat his words. Um, I would be more than happy to watch him eat that little puppet with a fork and spoon, eating his words that she has so much success. She is amazing. I can't. I can't be happy enough for her that she's finally free of getting unused at the untapped potential that she is. Well, all these guys and girls, they have that ninety days compete clause, right? Mm-hmm. So I'm pretty sure she'll heal up to whatever she needs in that ninety days. Yeah. And um, listen, she might be around for Slam Anniversary. I think that'd be a great debut if you pull around Slam Anniversary. Um, well. I mean, I think, what is the 90-day compete end in, like, July, right? I think, I think so. They were, yeah, like July, somewhere around that summertime. Yeah, that's about right. Uh, let's be honest. If, if Since they uh, cut Joe also, we'll, we'll jump into that in a second. Joe is very happy. What happened? My fault. I, the wife is, like, texting like crazy. It's all good. Don't worry about it. Um, if Joe goes back to Impact 2, and gets on wait, commentary because wait, wait, wait. he's still healing. Can I say my piece so you can have yeah, your yeah. basic piece on it? Go ahead. Go okay. on. Okay. Now, and I know Mike was talking to me before this make complete sense about ROH and Impact being a stomping ground. I get that. Mm-hmm. Do I I would have no problem with him signing in, in either. I'm going to say that as well. He signs an ROH, dope. He signs with Impact, dope. I want to see him go to MLW and join Contra Unit because I think him standing by Jacob Fatu... The Iranian super soldier Davari, um, Simon Gotch, and Madge Kruger makes them the most official faction right now in wrestling. I think that's such a badass group that that's where I want to see him go to MLW. He's won gold in, in, listen, he's won gold in, in WWE. He's won all the gold in Impact Wrestling TNA. He's won all the gold, well, he's won a bunch of gold in ROH. MLW is something he had to touch. So I'm going to say I want Samoa Joe and MLW and Contra Unit with the big dog Jacob Samuel and would absolutely kill it. That's my take. My fault, gentlemen. It's all good. I mean, like, I would love to see that too. Joe's got time. Joe can stop anywhere he wants, pick a couple of flowers, put a few people and put them in, give them a nap. All right. Nap, tap, snap, whatever. Joe's more than good enough to do that anywhere he goes once he gets completely healed up. And again, this is the, this is the dirty grimy. This is why I'm chapped about it. This is why everybody, everybody's pissed about it. Because literally, these people who have been re-signed, half of them, are, were on contracts, were either working off injuries, or were just not getting used. Larkin, bro, Mr. Yes. Pop Culture, yes. tell me that you thought that when you saw this list of, of talent that got the axe the Black Wednesday, that this was a complete bad call. And it's just literally them trying to basically make themselves look better for their quarterly stuff. Mm-hmm. Educate us. For me, I look at it from a stance too, like this is a year to the day <laughs> that they did last year. And some of the talents that they that they kept, I mean, a lot of them are just, you know what it is too? You also let a guy go like Samoa Joe, and I'll go to that point. Look at Samoa Joe. He was doing commentary. He was great. And we were talking about this. They replaced... um. 
Tom Phillips with that guy who's on the MLB network on Raw who sucks, and they put him on the day after WrestleMania. <laughs> Like, well, I'm sorry. Just the fact that you came out was like, he just sucks. Like He sucks. <laughs> and, okay. And now you have Pat McAfee with on SmackDown now with Michael Cole. And don't get me wrong. He looked good in his match against Adam Cole, and he took it seriously, much like Bad Bunny. I also look at it from a stance, too, when it comes to Samoa Joe. Like, you have, like you said, new new a new place to go in MLW. Never been to MLW. You also got NWA out there. But when you look at Impact Wrestling, if you look at the focal point, when you look at the X division, when you look at the heavyweight division, you think Samoa Joe. And when you look at Ring of Honor, I mean, former Ring of Honor world champion, former pure champion, like the dude was money there. Such an undefeated streak. Same with an Impact Wrestling. But from a stance with Samoa Joe, like you said, Macho, if you have him heal up, he's got time. He's got time. So wherever he makes his debut, you know it's going to be something special, and you know it's going to be a special moment for the wrestling fans. Dude, the fans love Joe. Every time Joe comes out, I hear Joe's going to kill you. Joe is going to. They know he's legit. Let me, let, let me, you know what, Chef, if you got something to add at this point about Joe, do it because I'm going to, I'm getting ready to jump into the rest of this, this hit list. No, no, no. I, I'm, I'm good with it. I, I said my piece. I, I, I'm not a fan of Joe. I love his work. I've just never been a fan, but I, I do love his in ring. I love his promos. I'm just not a fan. Anywhere he goes, acid, no question. Um, I can see him picking any ones you say because it's all legit. Uh, do you want to jump into Mickey James next? Uh, it'll be Mickey James, Peyton Royce, and Billy K for me. All right. So I want to do Mickey James because I think that Mickey James comes back to NWA to be with her husband, and she kind of makes the women's division a whole lot more legit because. Everywhere Mickey James has went, Mickey James has won gold. So I think Mickey James goes to NWA. She all of a sudden pits people like Camille on notice, uh, Thunder Rosa for as long as she's there left. She puts her on notice. I think Mickey James is the perfect person to come back and help build NWA to that next level that it could be. And going to Impact Wrestling, it doesn't help them at all. It helps NWA way more. Legit, right. agree. I'll speak on this. First and foremost, when it comes to her and her husband, as long as James Storm is not knocking her off the train tracks again, I'm cool. <laughs> <laughs> you had to snatch that. You had to snatch that from me, huh? yep. I don't want to be an asshole, but when he freaking uh, kicked her off the train track, into the train tracks, I did laugh. I did not try to be a piece of shit, but I just thought it was like, I've never seen anybody do something like this, especially to a female. And James Storm, if you look at his body of work, his shit, he looks like he would... Super kick a chick off, you know, off a thing just because. Okay. When it comes to <laughs> Mickey James, first and foremost, if she goes back to Impact, we get to hear hardcore country. You know what I'm saying? Former knockouts champ. <laughs> Former knockouts champion did the damn thing. And I mean, we've seen the tweets with her and Gail Kim have Mickey James and Chelsea Green come in as a team. They got the knockouts tag titles. NWA should be an asset to the division. A lot of people want to see Mickey James versus Thunder Rosa. And I am all for that. Sign me up. I want to see so, Mickey James and Jazz too, dude. I want to see the like ooh. legendary wrestlers go at it, dude. That's legit. Yeah, but like that's the thing when it comes to Mickey James, whether she goes to Impact, NWA, it doesn't matter. Like with her, what I also kind of was like with her, like she was injured. I mean, they kind of used her in like the legendary status. She did some commentary and like main event while she was injured. But you also look at it from a stance too. Like I'm looking at her, like that's a coach mentality right there. You have people like Sarah Mata, aka Sarah Del Rey. You have a lot of people from a coaching standpoint and a training standpoint that she could do. But I'm like, man, if you just put her in NWA or Impact, that's like my two that I'm leading towards. Because like you said, Magnus, Nick Aldis, and the bouts with Thunder Rosa, like Macho said, Jazz. Like you have a lot of prime matchups and fresh matchups for Mickey James to do. So yeah, I'm all for it. I got to agree with both of you guys. Mickey James, uh, she's a legend, a living legend. She's an icon. Everybody recognizes her entrance music at, at impact. Everybody recognizes her anywhere she goes. Um, she is a legit uh, first ballot hall of famer in any, any promotion she goes to. She's nothing but upside. Um, she can still go in the ring she can teach a whole lot of people a whole lot about the business. Like she is absolutely uh, precious anywhere she goes, and I got nothing bad to say about it. Uh, she's all upside, and you'd be anybody would be crazy not to throw a lot of money at her to join their promotion. Period. All right, now there is a name on this list that I keep saying that I have no idea who the hell this is. Who the fuck's 
Mans is Tucker. All right. So Tucker is the one who teamed with Otis in Heavy Machinery. Oh, he's the not so fun guy. Yes. He is the big athletic guy, though. So, I mean, like, he can go in the ring. I think he got underutilized in uh, WWE uh, when they did his I remember, big. I remember the, the little fat guy who talked all crazy. Rah, 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 you know, I thought he was hilarious. That's like, Otis. I, that was his tag partner. Well, I liked the guy who was still there then. <laughs> <laughs> okay. To add on to what Macho was saying, Tucker Knight is what he was in NXT. When they brought him up to the main roster, he was just Tucker, and Otis would call him Tucky, 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 and that voice is. So you have him as a team with heavy machinery. They split them up because Tucker turns on Otis. Then he goes to Raw, and he's not doing nothing. I mean, he won the 24-7 title, for God's sake, which everybody's practically won the 24-7 title. They did nothing with him, and he even wrote on Twitter. He said, I'm finally free, baby. So he's happy to get the hell out of there. Yep. So, I mean, for, for him, like, you could put him, and like Macho said, he's athletic. This dude can move for his size. He throws a sweet drop kick. I've seen him do yeah. some drop kicks up in NXT. Put him in Impact, put him in MLW, put him in NWA, put him in AEW. I don't care. Wherever he goes, the sky's the limit because he does have potential, and I think we need to have that unlocked potential in one of those wrestling companies. And he's healthy, yeah. and he can go. They just underutilized him, bro. So you guys are really high on him. Dude, he's he can, good. He, he's good. He can go. Um, he's no, he's not a scrub. I watch a bunch of his NXT matches. He's legit. Uh, he can go in the ring. They just never gave him a gimmick he can work with, and they just—it's a mojo. It's it's the mojo feeling, like when you got a tag team, you cherry pick the one guy you want, and then the other guy just kind of languishes. Um, they did nothing with him. They wasted his time. They wasted his potential. Uh, it's creative. It's a creative death, and that that twenty four seven belt. That's the kiss, of, real kiss of death, dude. Like, <laughs> hey, uh, for twenty four seven look, champions. So, yeah, look what they do to Kira Tozawa, dude. They got him chasing after that belt with a bunch of ninjas. Come on, man, yep. that dude can wrestle. What are you doing? I mean, our truth it makes sense because it's our truth, and he's a vet, and he's funny, and he's legit funny, and it's he's comedy. But everybody else, it's like, all right, whatever. It's, it's, it's that's the belt. If if you have nothing for that person, let's just have them run around with our truth for the twenty four seven title. It's Benny right. Hill clown shoes, bro. <laughs> So my next name, once again, I do not know this name either, Wesley Blake. All right, I'll, I'll, I'll take this one. So Wesley Blake is the former tag team partner of Buddy Murphy, who was on WWE right now. He's on SmackDown. Him and Buddy Murphy were the NXT tag champs in like 2014. They were managed by Alexa Bliss when Alexa Bliss was in, was in NXT. He currently was a part of the Forgotten Sons with Steve Cutler, who also got released. He was with Deanna Perrazzo. Um, he was with Jackson Riker, who was formerly Gunner in TNA and the Forgotten Sons. Uh, he just, They weren't doing nothing with him either, man. When he was in NXT, they didn't push him. It was more about Murphy than Murphy got called up. Wesley Blake just kind of got into the back burner on the back nine, if you will. He's a talent. He's good. But I'm like, really, to be honest with you, his release is just like, hmm, whatever. Because they weren't doing nothing with him, to be completely honest with you. Do you see him going anywhere? Uh, to be honest with you, I think he's just going to rock on the indies. I really don't see him like in the impact or anything right now. Okay. Respectfully disagree. Okay. Um, I, I think he's got enough shine on him for uh, for being in NXT uh, and his Forgotten Sun stint that they would probably pair him up in a tag team. Um, he could he could uh, enhance any tag division he goes to. He can wrestle. Um, I'm not going to say he, he's, he's uh, bananas on the mic, but he can go. And let's be honest, after looking at AEW and the uh, – uh, fear, fear the revelation or whatever they're calling themselves. You clearly don't have to be good on the mic. All right. It's unnecessary. If you can go on the ring, uh, he can go, he can make the trip to AEW impact or RH if he wants. Um, I think he's been in at least one or two of those before. So, uh, easy, easy slide in anywhere he goes. He stays healthy. He's in great shape. Why not? I'll take a, I'll take a, why not? I'm going to go down the fellas' names so we leave the ladies for last, which I love okay. all the ladies. They get more attention. Bo Dallas. Now, Ugh. I... Wow, why'd you go... Ugh, I know who Bo Dallas is, surprisingly. And <laughs> I don't mind Bo Dallas. I think Bo Dallas is an actually decent wrestler. So I get, if the X Division was the real X Division, I would love to see him in Impact Wrestling. But the X Division is not the X Division. It's kind of whatever the fuck they're going to make it. And I think Bo Dallas will be dope for Ring of Honor. So I'm picking Ring of Honor for Bo Dallas because I think that Bo Dallas will have more creative in Ring of Honor than anywhere else. So I'm going to say, Mr. Bo Dallas, 
you go bring your ass to Ring of Honor and maybe sign up with with uh, the king over there, EC3. Now, I'm not, I went, uh, for Bo Dallas because I'm with you. Like, the brother of Bray Wyatt, the son of IRS, he can wrestle too. He's a former NXT champion. Really didn't do much with him on the main roster. Like, the last time we saw him, he was with Curtis Axel on the B team. You know what I'm saying? And that was however That's a long fucked ago. up name. That is a messed yeah. up name. You're not even the A team. You're the other guys. They won the tag titles and they got over. They won the tag titles. <laughs> so, I mean, he's good. He can really wrestle. And I think with what Sheffro, just to say what you're saying, like go to Ring of Honor, Impact. Those are the two I'm leaning towards for him because he can go. He's funny. He's entertaining. And they could use him properly and let him have that creative control like they're doing with his brother. So, go ahead, Macho. Wait, wait, mm-hmm. Macho, before you go in, if he was to go to MLW, could you see him feuding with Richard Holiday? Yes. Whoa. Absolutely. Good one. <laughs> so I think uh, because of his ability for like comedic timing, because he can turn uh, chicken shit into chicken salad, um, <laughs> dude, I could see him going to AEW. I'm serious. Like, he, he's got comedic timing. They gave him nothing to work with, and he still made it work. They gave him the 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 Bo Leave skit. They gave they never literally took him seriously or gave him anything to work with. Okay. Um, I remember him wrestling JVL. Dude, he can wrestle. Okay, mm-hmm. he really is just as good as his brother when it comes to wrestling. All right, he can go. All right, he is not the son of IRS for no do, no reason, dude. I have watched him put some banger matches on. They just, just absolutely said, underutilized him. You just said he could wrestle with Bray Wyatt. He's that good as a wrestler. As a wrestler, strictly. Well, to, to go off what Macho's saying, him and his brother did have a great match in NXT in like 2013 when Bray Wyatt was in the full Wyatt family character. It was very, very good. Yeah, The Wyatts were from 2013? Yeah, when they Back came. Back in NXT. To, yeah, in NXT before they got called to the main roster. Then they made the debut oh. in 2013. They beat up Kane. I did not know it's that old. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Dude, for, for, for the longest, like for like two or three years after that, they were people were guessing and speculating that he ended up on the Wyatt family because of it. Hmm. Because of his feud uh, with Bray Wyatt. Nope, didn't happen. They just never pulled the trigger on it. Dude, he can wow. go. All I right. Did. He's an easy jump to AEW, in my opinion. Um, again, making something out of nothing, that takes talent. When yeah, creative hands you nothing. Where, where, where does he fit in AEW? What, are you going to have a few with Sting, son? Yeah, easy. Okay. Yeah. Uh, any, anybody in anything can do nothing but help uh, Sting Jr., okay? Um, <clears throat> he can go. And he's not unfamiliar with tag, uh, tag wrestling either. So, again, uh, you need somebody for the young punks to wrestle? Bam, done. All right. Um, I... He can fit easily in any place. If they give him a decent gimmick, he can go. If they let him do his own gimmick, he can go. Um, who else we got on this list? Because you got uh, your favorite uh, NXT slash WWE superstar, Moho Rawley. Moho, Mo- Moho, Mojo, Moho. No, uh, homie, I'm Puerto Rican. If it's spelled M O J O, it's Moho. All right, fair enough. Uh, look, Mo. Mojo, uh, man, that's rough. Um, he can go. He can wrestle for the most part. He's not He's not any standout, in my opinion. He got saddled with a lot of crap gimmicks. I can see him going to Impact because Cardona's there. Um, he knows Cardona. Uh, he knows a bunch of dudes. And, again, saddled with a really shit gimmick. Um, they had him sitting in a mirror painting his own face, and yeah. I don't even know what. Like, they just need to let him be him. All right? Let him go. He can get over eventually on his own with his own merit. Throw him to Impact. Throw him to uh, ROH. Again, we know he can wrestle. Uh, he just needs time on the mic. Actually, I could see him in NWA too. Um, he'd, he'd be a, a decent-sized fish in that pond. Yeah. Especially because of his work ethic. Pop now, culture? For me, for what he's done, like, in the NFL, him and Gronkowski, we saw that last year at last year's WrestleMania. Former tag team partner, Zack Ryder in the Hype Bros. Nose Cardona, like Macho said. 
They weren't doing nothing with him. Like they had him turn heel on Zack Ryder. Then he painted his face in the mirror. And that was supposed to be like a new thing. And he was a heel. They went nowhere with it. And he's just kind of floundering. Like he was the 24 seven champion, which of course he was. So ah, I mean, the kiss, kiss of death. death. Kiss of death. And yeah, for me, like NWA has a great division where he could fit. Uh, for me, I could see him possibly ring of honor, but if I had to lean, I'm just going to say impact because Cardone is there. That's fine. So I'm glad we got all the dudes out the way. Now there's a, a pair. They're called the Iconics. I know you obviously know their work. Hold, hold, nope. hold up. I got, I got to put your brakes. You almost got there. Kalisto. Oh, oh snap. snap. I forgot Kalisto. All right. So I'm going to say Kalisto real quick. Should have went to impact once again, like the other thing, if there was an X division title, that was a real X division title. Kalisto would be the perfect fit for the X division. I don't like the X Division because it's not the X Division to me. I don't want to hear any of these nerds say, it's limitless and weightless and all this other bullshit. No, let's let's go back to what the X Division did for TNA and let's remember the matches that they had. That is not the X Division. I want that X Division. It's not that. I think Kalisto goes to Ring of Honor because I think he fits perfectly in Ring of Honor. Gentlemen. I'm going to say, uh, actually, I think he go, he can go to MLW and give, give a real hard fight for that... Uh, that 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 uh cruiser belt that they have in MLW. Uh what do they call it? The uh You're not talking about the IWA that's there now, right? No, no. I'm talking about uh against uh the man of the hour, his belt. Oh my god, I just forgot what the name of the belt is, but I know he calls it the money weight, like the money yeah, weight, the money yeah. Leo Rush, yeah. He, he will be him, in a sick match with Leo Rush. Him and Rush could put a burner on, dude. I'm positive. They're that quick and that good. Larkin? Like, for me, I'll go MLW as well now that we're talking about it, because I remember they actually had a very good match on 205 Live when, like, Leo Rush was the Cruiserweight champ for the whole nine there. Like, they had some good stuff. Man, when he came in and he was with Sin Cara and they were the Lucha Dragons in uh, NXT, then they brought him up and he was doing his thing. He was the U.S. champ. He beat Alberto Del Rio. Uh, he also beat Enzo Amore for the Cruiserweight Championship, and they had a feud over that. Um, then they saddled him with the with the uh, Lucha house party thing with him, Grand Matalik, Lindsay Dorado. Like, he can wrestle. He's very, very good. But, again, they weren't doing nothing with him. They kind of split him away from the Lucha house party. Mm-hmm. And, again, really nothing. And I'm fine with him going to Impact and being the NX division or MLW against Leo Rush. Give me either of those two, and I'm happy. But he's very good. Very yeah, good. Yeah, he, he, he's a legit top-shelf luchador, bro. He, he can go. Mm-hmm. All know right. What? I agree with that completely. I love the MLW die, the MLW thing. I'm going to retract my statement, which I don't like doing, and I do not want him to go to Ring of Honor. I want him to go to MLW. Thank you, Mr. Macho. Um, now we have the Iconics, who we'll finish this off with, which is Peyton Royce and Billy Kay. Do they separate and go their own way to different things, or do they stay a tag team and go to Impact because – what are they going to do with AEW if they're a women's tag team? Their women's tag team medals do nothing. We have the issue with Eva Lee. So the full tag team women's medals goes to Diamante. Why would they go to AEW? I don't know when the women's tag team division is popping and Impact Wrestling. I think they go to Impact and Gail Kim did throw out. We have a women's tag team division. Let's get it on. I think the Iconics, they go over there. And they absolutely murder it. And I'm going to tell you now, as much as I love, uh, I think it's called what, Flavor and Fire, whatever the name is, I do not have a problem. They've had the belts long enough. And I know the fans are going to be like, I hate when WWE talent come over and win a belt. I'm not saying day one they come in, pay-per-view, they beat them. I do see that as soon as they go against them, I have no problem with the Iconics winning and then making that division look a little stronger than you build a great rivalry between Flavor and Fire versus the Iconics, which they'll have a different name. Gentlemen, what's your take on the Iconics? All right. So I knew about Peyton Royce and Billy Kay because they did some great work at Shimmer, which a lot of those girls in WWE came from Shimmer. Um, when it comes to the two of them, like I love like the Mean Girls type of characters that they had. They were funny as a team. They were. They were just so entertaining. Uh, they got their WrestleMania moment to become the women's tag team champions. Um, they split them up. Peyton Royce, like, she cut a hell of a promo on Raw Talk. I wanted to see that keep going and going, but they had yeah. her face Oscar, and then she lost. Uh, Peyton Royce was doing the thing with Lacey Evans, teaming for, like, a small bit. Uh, Billy Kay was funny, you know, with the resume, trying to like, get with the superstars. But for me, I look at it from a stance, too. Now, Peyton Royce is married to Mr. Sean Spears in AEW. 
So Ooh, that's why I'm thinking possibly. That. Yes. So that's why I'm thinking possibly AEW for her. But I like the idea of having those two go to Impact and go for the Impact Women's Tag, the Knockout Tag Team titles. So for me, I think it's a toss up for they could possibly spit them up, put Billy Kay over an Impact or in a Peyton Royce and AEW, or I'm just putting both in Impact and go for the Knockout Tag Title. So I'm, it's a toss between AEW and Impact. Yes, I had to mention that Peyton Royce and Sean Spears. Because mm-hmm. you said that, and my fault, Macho, one of them can actually sign with Impact, kayfabe, or, or vice versa, whatever. And both of them could be in tag team division with AEW and Impact if they actually do the partnership right. You know what I mean? Like, it could be like, hey, yeah, you're signed over there. We are X pencil in whatever the name is. We're going to dominate over here, and we're going to dominate over there. And they could do both. Agreed, but I don't think they will. I don't no. think Impact I don't think Impact has has that worked out well enough. They haven't yet. I don't expect them to going forward. Um, it's a great idea. If they could. They should. But I don't think they will. Um, I, I knew about her and Sean Spears that they've been married for a minute. I think they've been married for something like a year or two now. Yeah. Um, they 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 would make a, a cute power couple. He's busy doing his pinnacle thing. Um, she would feel pretty comfortable in AEW legit quick. Um, why not? But I would love to see the two of them together in Impact. Um, but there's a really high chance that they'll get they'll split up and catch up at some point. But at least it's not so separated that they can't get back together because of the connection between Impact and AEW right now. So it's a win win. Do I see them going anywhere else, uh, shine, shimmer, or anything like that? Maybe, but probably not. Um, I expect them to go to one of those two other uh, promotions and just bang it out. Any one of them could have a great match with Britt. Um, hell, they could go have a great match with Thunder Rosa or Serena Deeb. Or they, they, they can wrestle, dude. Um, and they're entertaining. So what I suspect is they'll probably both go to AEW. That's my this is my speculation. They'll wow. probably go both to A go both go to AEW um and enhance their women's division. Um they'll take turns, they'll hang out to do their thing. I personally think the smart move though is to go to impact, take those women's tag belts and elevate that whole division. That's just my two cents. No, I agree. I, I dig it. I mean that's that was my take on it is go where there is value for you. I mean I don't know with AEW and it's no shot at them, you got kind of hyped because you seen the tag team women's tournament. You you were like, okay, they you know they're, they're doing something with the women's tag thing. Thunder, uh, Diamante and, and Eva Lee have got the the medals. We do understand that quickly after that they had the incident with Thunder Rose and Eva Lee, and the issues happened and whatever else happened. So it's kind of like, but well, what do the medals mean? Did you have a direction for the medals? And because of the Eva Lee situation, it it diffused it or what with impact you have the tag titles already sitting there um the, uh, flavor and fire they keep taking shots at aew women all the time they're constantly if you want it, bring it you know we want that smoke like those girls keep talking shit i think it'll be smart we all think that the partnership isn't that great of a partnership i don't care what the nerds think but um um let me add on to the partnership really quickly. My bad for cut you off then. Or yeah. lack of their partnership. Yes, that's what I'm saying. I got to cut you off on that because I kind of agree with that because if you look at who they brought in, like they had the Kenny Omega and the Young Bucks. They're not Kenny Omega, but the Kenny Omega thing. They had private party for a hot minute and they had Finn Juice. Like who else do you see like coming over there? Like they haven't had a lot of people. Besides the Good Brothers, name one person on the Impact roster that's been on AEW. None. None. Crickets. Ah, wait. You know what I mean? Like, so everybody that this, this buzz that this partnership had to me is dead. I could care less anymore. It, they've done nothing with it. Like we said before, you had a woman's tournament. You didn't even have one impact woman on it. Uh, you have all these things. You have the dark. You have what's the, the Monday show called? Elevation. Elevation. You have that. We still have not even seen one impact roster guy on any of those. Why? If you have a partnership, use the shit. Again, we, we've had this discussion, uh, previous stuff. If people want, jump back to earlier uh, rec- in any shows we did. Uh, there's plenty of people. The, the amount of people that could make that crossover from Impact, uh, so, uh, yeah, from Impact to AEW, sure, there's a handful of, of talented dudes. I would love to see Moose come in and wreck shop. Not going to happen. I would love to see 
uh, a lot of their their talent. Uh, actually, know this, Cordona. Cordona actually is the guy that got, come from Impact and shifted over to AEW. No, no, um, he went from AEW to Impact. Yeah, he was in AEW then to Impact. Remember, he was with Cody Rhodes. Okay, that's right. I can't remember which one he did first. I thought he shot he popped up on Impact first, but I could be wrong. Um, uh, he, he jumped to AEW, did a few little things, and then uh, wind up being with Impact and being all there are already a lot more. Why haven't I seen James Storm on AEW? Why haven't I seen half of their 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 venerable? Dude, help you! I put- take Eddie Edwards. Go ahead, throw Eddie Edwards. Eddie Edwards and Moxley, book it, okay? That Why would be not? good, and I'm not right. a fan of either, but that would be I, a great match. I, I'm not either, but book it, dude. There's so many people that they can cross uh, cross match and have amazing matches with, and they don't. They just look at it and go, okay, cool, that's nice, and it sits in a corner. It's a Believe waste. it or not, and you know I'm not a fan of the older talent guys. It's just me, but if they actually let Johnny Swinger be a heel, I think Johnny Swinger could do some really cool shit in AEW. Oh, yeah, he's funny. He has that gimmick, that very retro, you know, old school type gimmick. And that was and my he, point. His physique is legit. Like, he's not a sloppy dude. Like, he's not for his, for his side. He's great. He keeps himself in tip top shape. And the thing I was trying to say, like, before that is, like, what gets me too is, like, we were talking about that partnership. Like, again, like, they only brought in, like, New Japan with Finn Juice. And no disrespect to David Finley and Juice Robinson. They're good. But I'm like, that, that's all you got is Finn Juice from New Japan, you know, because I wanted to crop that too. Uh, I'm a massive uh, Juice Robinson fan. I of didn't course. know shit about him. Uh, when he was having that beef with the, the guy I don't like, the Switchblade guy. Oh, Jay White. Jay White. When he was having a, a beef with him, I wind up being on Instagram. And I watched promos because I was like, who is this guy with this crazy look? And I clicked on it, and he was talking crazy shit. And I was like, all right, let me do a little more homework on this guy because I like talking shit. Former football player, bass player, I talk a lot of shit. So I was like, I dig this guy. Started watching his matches. I dig Juice Robinson. I think he's a hell of a talent. He Again, can talk he, to anybody. To, to your point, uh, WWE wasted him in NXT. I didn't know he was an NXT guy. He was TJ Parker. He was TJ Parker. He had, they had him running around with a sign, a billboard, or some dumb shit for a minute. Like, I'm, <laughs> it's like, I'm like, come on, man. It's like an environmentalist, right? And, and and that's yeah exactly and that's the thing right they're like oh he he he's got dreads make him uh, an environmentalist guy look creative in, in uh, WWE is is stupid half the time they don't know what to do with themselves um, they waste a lot of talent all the time uh, to the earlier point uh, Josh Alexander uh, the 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 living the lethal weapon Josh Alexander uh, Eric Young um, and a oh, bunch he- of cats. Rohit Austin, uh, Ace Austin, any one of those dudes could come over to AEW and put on burner matches, okay? And vice versa. You can have any of those other cats from AEW come over to Impact and put on burner matches with them. Why not do it? How long How long have they had this, uh, Larkin, how long have they been doing this partnership now? How many months? Probably, like, I'm going to say, like, what, like, three, four months? It, like, started, like, the beginning of the year, and now here we are mm-hmm. in April. A- and they've announced nothing. I've seen nobody pop up from anybody's pay-per-views. Nothing. It's just a waste. Why? Just have these dudes come over and do the thing. I just no reason not to. There's none. I would love to see a joint pay-per-view. Something. Give me something to eat off of. Um, at this point, like I said, it is what it is. I think we covered everybody. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. Any takes on anything that we have left besides you wanting to put uh, cement shoes on poor little evil Obert and throw him into uh, Niagara Falls? Look, that that puppet is, uh, is special. Um, that said, I, I feel like in closing, uh, yeah. Give Chelsea Green her her due. Let her go. Let her fly free. Let her heal up and just be an amazing. Have Gail come out of of retirement for one more match. Watch her put on an amazing match. I know Gail can still go. Gail left at the top of her game, dude. Gail just decided, you know what? I got nothing left to prove. I'm going out on top. 
she did it like a class act too. And you know she's still in her veins impact. So why not? Um they need to get they just need to just ratchet it up, take all of that talent and have Lacey and all the rest of them just bang out some burner, dude. This is the year, absolutely the year where women's wrestling, uh, because of everything going on, can elevate itself to that next level, become just as much a main event as anything else, obviously. So why not do it? Pull the trigger. Make it happen. Larkin? All right. My last two things would be all we are saying is give Green a chance. And, <laughs> number, and number two would be I'm wearing a robe. I got my black slippers and my glow, ruling the world with my eyes closed. Ice Cube, Crazy Bone, until we rich. I'm out. You know what? I dig that so much. Also, before we go, you already know it's www.urbanwrestlingnetwork.com. We also just posted an interview where Mr. Mike Larkin had with Molly Spartan of ICW, which is on the WWE Network with Peacock and whatever else you want to label anything. That's a dope list. And tonight, Macho. And Bill Vink will be talking to Lexi Gomez, so y'all better be looking out for that as well. Gentlemen and ladies and everything, it's Friday. I hope you enjoy your weekend. God bless and all that good shit. Deuces. Later.